the final lick, I wanted something powerful and a little bit scary. So I thought about attaching descending fours to some kind of scale. But you know what, descending fours is actually kind of boring. Harmonically, it doesn't really harmonize anything. It's just a scale played over itself. Plus, I realize that whatever I'm playing here kind of needs to be in the upper registers to be heard over the other guitars, because everything is on 11 at this point. So the workaround is a circular pattern of fours that does three repetitions of four in one position. then moves up one position and does it again. This is all alternate picking starting on a downstroke. Now this is powerful, there's so much cool stuff going on in the chords. That it'd be kind of a shame not to say something about that. So I came up with this two string arpeggio pattern that you can move through positions to exactly pace the underlying progression. Descending fours already ate up two of the chords, so we're on the D chord now. And the pattern that I've concocted is actually a B minor seven pattern. Here's the fingering. You can think of this as B minor seven, which is B, D, F sharp, and A. Or you can think of it as D major six, D, F sharp, A, and B. Doesn't matter, same notes. You can play D major six over a B in the bass. You can play B minor seven over a D in the bass. In fact, no matter which bass note you choose, minor seven and major six are almost the same chord. The reality is I'm using it here for mechanical considerations. I want those two notes on the B string. Because of the combination of alternate picking and sweeping that I'm using. The next chord up is the dominant chord. So the trick is to take this pattern and translate it to the new harmony while keeping the essential mechanics intact. I decided to do this with an augmented dominant. And that's because augmented is cool. And also the whole point of this pattern is to enable us to do stuff that's interesting. Here's the voicing I'm using. In the name of interesting, you'll notice I'm also including the natural five as well as the major seven. And of course, these are mechanical considerations because I'm maintaining the same number of notes per string that I had in the B minor seven version of the pattern.
But I also think that these chord tones in particular enhance that ambiguous, almost anti-gravity feel that augmented chords tend to have. And just like we saw with the dominant tonic chromatic pattern in the chord progression, you don't have to stop at E. You can take this pattern all the way up the neck. 